So it's October 26th, Wednesday morning. It's about 0540 right now at the West End Gun Club. Uh, I have an LED light on the top of my camera right now because it's pitch dark. Sunrise should be a little bit after 630, but I'm here at the range early this morning to record some footage because I got a new accessory for my AICS chassis, which I'll show you when it starts getting a little brighter. But essentially it's a tripod mount. So it's made by Really Right Stuff, which I wanted to bring out here and try to shoot off a tripod. It's gonna do that this morning because I had, didn't have time on the weekend and it seems like I could, I had enough time this morning to take care of this or do the little shooting before I head off to work. So that's why I'm out here early this morning, getting all my stuff staged, my target's already out there. And so I'm just waiting for a little bit of sunlight so I can start shooting the rifles. Um, I said rifles because I also brought out my Savage 10 FP which came back from CDI Precision and that one has the uh, detachable box magazine bottom metal on it which I will also show you when it gets a little lighter out And but I have that in the truck. So it's around 6.15 and it's still dark. We're waiting for the sun to crest out over the horizon so we can start shooting. Another guy showed up at the range so I mean, it's starting to look like weekdays are actually getting a little more busy early in the mornings than it, than it used to be because I used to, I typically am the only person here, but I guess people are starting to realize that the weekends are just way too busy, so people are coming out during the weekdays to get their shooting done early in the morning when no one else is here, which is going to be catch-22 because if everyone else starts doing that, then it's not going to be, uh, you know, as empty as you would expect. So it is what it is. Uh, as far as uh, there's no light, there's no sunlight right now, um, I'm looking forward to the end daylight savings because daylight savings sucks, in my opinion. I hate it. I've never liked daylight savings. I prefer light early in the morning. I don't really care about light in the afternoon. I know a lot of people prefer it still being sunlight when they leave work. Frankly, I don't care because I'm an early riser and I like to get stuff done early in the morning. So, I mean, when we roll the clocks back in that uh, not this next Sunday, so not this Sunday, but next Sunday, I mean, it would be nicer because it's actually going to be sunlight before six, which helps me out a lot in the winter time because I can actually shoot early in the mornings uh, and not have to wait for the sun to come out. As far as my shooting's been concerned in the recent weeks, I've been busy at work, so that's why I'm not coming out on the weekdays as often due to the fact that I've taken over a lot of tasks and duties in the office uh, due to the loss of personnel. So hopefully that's going to let up and I'll be able to take some vacation days because I'm still capped on vacation and I need to take them anyway. So I'm trying to, I think I'm going to go head out to this range out in Paula that's only open on Mondays and Fridays. So I'm going to head out there probably next month and take a Monday off or a Friday off and try out that range because I've never been there for, been there before. So I want to check it out. Shoot something before that. You don't have any. You don't have any extra. No, I have an extra. So I already took a few shots off of this platform. Basically, this is the really right stuff bat rifle mount that they make for the ATA ICS chassis. Really Right Stuff has been trying to make a foray to the precision rifle sector by producing mounts that will fit on the stocks and chassis systems that will fit Arca Swiss style clamps because Really Right Stuff makes tripod heads or clamps that are Arca Swiss compatible. So basically that's what they're trying to push. And so last week they released the bat mount for the ATICS, which I ordered and installed last week, but only coming out today to shoot it. So as far as the setup is concerned, it's actually well balanced considering this tripod can only support about 17 pounds, give or take, based on Manfrotto specs, and this rifle weighs a tad over 15. So it's surprisingly balanced, yet I don't think it's stable enough. I took a few shots, and there's a lot of inherent wiggle with this ball head mount, and 
I think that's just the nature of this particular Manfrotto system. It's an old 488 RC2 head on the 055X Pro B. So I'm not sure if the BH55 head from Really Right Stuff will actually be a little more stable as far as the head's concerned, but this stem and this ball has a lot of wobble. So it's almost just like shooting for me standing unsupported when I used to shoot high power service rifle. I would shoot stand, you're supposed to shoot 200 yards standing with no support, which is your coat. And I'm getting that kind of wiggle. So you pretty much have to kind of equate your hold in this tripod setup and just try to, to make sure you break your trigger right when your reticle is going into the target and you should be able to, to make decent hits, but it's all about shot call at this, at this stage if, or this way this is set up. Um, but I'm just gonna try to get a few more rounds through this and figure it out. But I'm anticipating the way this is set up, I think this, this tripod head is the weak point here. Uh, just due to the inherent uh, wiggle factor or this wobble that you get because this is not as stout a system as you would want it to be for a heavy platform. As far as the use of tripods in precision rifle shooting, I can't give a give an opinion regarding the validity of it, it's, but it appears that it's becoming a lot more popular because of its use in military applications. And I think hundred you know hunters have been using tripods and bipods rather for a long time to get over tall brush and trying to shoot over particular objects from a fairly stable position, other than just not supported. So I think this is a valid, a valid, I guess, setup as far as trying to deploy a, a rifle system for, for field shooting. But I think it's gonna take a lot of practice as far as how to set this up correctly to eliminate a lot of this, this wobble factor and to eliminate uh, as much of the instability as possible. Granted, you can overcome a lot of these instabilities on this system just by simply controlling your hold. So, I mean, if you have solid fundamentals and you can, you know, break your trigger at the appropriate time, you should be able to overcome a lot of these, uh, these inherent, you know, issues with your, with your tripod setup or whatnot. Just a little aside as far as shooting from a, a fairly unstable position. So this tripod, when the way I'm shooting is like the reticle is kind of floating back and forth due to the fact that I got wobble introduced by my body, putting pressure on the stock. And so usually in standing unsupported in high power, you have to accept that wobble but you have to know how to control the f as far as your front sight post or the reticle as far as it moving into the target. So a lot of people will do what's called a hold and release. When they get on target, they'll they'll just pretty much hold until they get their rifle or their their sight front sight post or reticle on the target and then break it. But the correct way to do that is actually to understand where your rifle is going to flow and you're going to break the t break your shot right when the front side post or your reticle is going into 
the uh, that point in time. So, because you have this whole issue of lock time and when your trigger finger can, we remind can tell your finger to break the trigger and from the time that the trigger drops the firing pin, there's that lock time. So it's better to know how to anticipate as far as where in the, uh, where in your motion that your rifle is going to float into as far as your sight picture is concerned. So that's one tip as far as shooting, at least from an unstable position. So this is the Savage 10 p with the CDI Precision Gun Works detachable box magazine bottom metal. So I just wanted to make sure that it actually functions okay. I, I mean, I dry fired it at home, but I'm gonna go ahead and live fire it to make sure everything functions and uh, I guess the axery hasn't opened up. I torqued these down to 45 inch pounds on the two screws for the action and then 15 inch pounds for the rear trigger guard screw, which is really, doesn't do much except holds the trigger guard into place. Looks like we had a misfeed on that last round. Yeah, misfeed on the last round did not pick up. It's off the AI. That's off the Action International mag. Didn't pick up the didn't strip the the fifth round. I'm guessing there wasn't enough pressure, and it was slightly uh, bottomed out as far as the mag stop is concerned on the bottom metal. Let's try the Magpul AICS mags, or sorry, the Magpul AC P mag. It's a tighter fit. It's also important to note that I took this scope off when I set it off to see that precision. I put it back on and I didn't re-zero it. So I took the scope scope the scope rings off and the scope base off and I re-put the base put the rings and put the scope back in and I didn't re-zero it and it's actually holding up uh, about two minutes left in a minute up so it's not too bad as far as return That was out. So that was five. So that's stripped right. So I think it's okay. I think there's since there's some play in the AAC mag or the AICS mags that you could have that round stripping issue on the fifth round. But other than that, it should be fine. Drops free okay. But as I mentioned before, my in a, an early YouTube video or earlier YouTube video. Um, they fit kind of tight in the CDI bottom metal, so you kind of have to get it in square, just square or perfectly square into the magwell in order for it to insert. 
But after that, it does lock into place. There is an up and down play with the AICS mags. The P mags, not so much due to the fact that they fit so tightly into the bottom metal. So actually, the P mags might actually be a better choice for this for the specifics here, the bottom metal. But so I mentioned earlier that I ordered a barrel from Northland Shooter Supply. So I'm gonna have a 24 inch shillin and 65 Creedmoor coming in, one and eight twist with a recessed crown. And when I get that in, I'm gonna install it. Then I'm gonna test fire it, and after that. I'm going to probably have this thing re cut or the whole thing cut because this is a custom paint job. It's, I just did this with uh, brown nose alumahide several years back. I'm going to probably replace this Ken Farrell Zero MOA base with a 20 minute Badger ordnance base. And after that, I'm most likely going to get my hands on the Protex AMG. Uh, this is an old Bushnell 3200 Elite 10X by 40. It's a mil dot scope from 2003 2004. It's actually a pretty decent scope. They do, the newest version or the current version of this Bushnell 3200 Elite is actually, it's a 10 by 40 fixed mil dot, but it has mil adjustments. This is MOA adjustments, it's quarter MOA, but the current version has 0.1 mil radiant adjustments per click. So it's not bad, for, it still runs for under 200. I bought this for 150 back in 0304. And it's actually surprisingly decent, and I know it tracks. It does hold zero and it tracks because I've, I've taken it out to 600 often and brought it down, back down to 100 and it maintains the, the tracking. Like, doesn't, there's no real shift as far as zero is concerned to and from running up and down on your turrets. So if you're looking for a low budget scope, Bushnell 3200 Elite 10 by 40 mil dot with mil adjustments is actually going to work pretty well for you. Come down. One, two, four. Come right. Three, two. I'm gonna come down one a minute, right to a minute and a half, or sorry, half a minute. That should be fine. Uh, came down too far. One thing I don't like about Savage is the bolt lift after firing because you have to cock the bolt on lift and so you have a lot of a lot of tension. So I have to take my face off the stock usually to get enough torque. And I broke that shot late. It's fine. And that's it, five rounds, so that had no issues. So as far as the CDI Precision Gunworks bottom metal, I think it's a pretty good deal if you already have a Savage 10 FP or Savage Short Action, Long Action or whatever. If you're looking for a detachable box magazine bottom metal, definitely give them a whirl. It's only $205, roughly $210 for the bottom metal and then they install for free. You just got to ship it to them. So that free charge is actually going to be an extra 100 bucks or so, give or take for the round trip from your rifle to them and the rifle back to you. So I think 300 and change is not too bad for retrofitting an old rifle that I had to get it modernized as far as being able to use removable magazines that are sort of the de facto standard right now as far as precision rifles are concerned. So again, this is a 10 FP short action from 2003. It's got the 4.275 inch spaced action screws on a McMillan A5 stock that I bought from McMillan after the fact and with the new CDI bottom metal. So as far as bringing new life to this rifle, I'm going to continue on again with the rebarrel. I'm going to continue on that series of articles on my blog. If you check it out at okabj.net, I'll have, you can find that first article with a lot of photos of the CDI Precision Gunworks bottom metal that you can look at. But stay tuned for the uh, rebarreling when I get that barrel in, hopefully in the next month or two. So here's a close-up of the CDI Precision Gunworks bottom metal on this McMillan E5 stock. As you can see here how they inleted it, 
there's actually an angle or slope up into this so the inside chassis of the stock is slightly exposed here if you can actually see it when it focuses in it's not a big deal but it obviously needs to be repainted or recoded just to cover that up they uh they inlet of the stock you got new action screws and then um they repurposed the trigger guard screw because this is kind of uh proprietary to this middle and a5 stock so if i lose the screw it's kind of i'm kind of screwed proverbially speaking but um so you have the uh you kind of see the inside of this trigger underneath the trigger guard you got this fat lever it's kind of a pain though the way this lever is designed you don't have excellent clearance as far as straight line but you can still get enough where you can put a torque wrench there so as i mentioned earlier right if I, I think I mentioned earlier, I put the 25 inch pounds for the stock action screws and then 15 inch pounds for that rear trigger guard screw because the rear trigger guard screw doesn't do anything to the action, it just holds the trigger guard in place against the stock. It's the action screws that matter, so these ones are torqued to 45 inch pounds. So this is pretty much the shot groups that I shot with the uh, off the tripod. These are these off the sav the savage. But so I was shooting in order from like this is the first target I shot. Second from the tripod. As you can see here, I'm just getting used to it. I threw one off. My shot calls are actually pretty decent. They they landed where I I expected them to hit based on where my reticle floated. So my call is good. It's just my hold needs to shrink down. As you can see here, it's kind of left and right is pretty much where my wobble is as far as the tripod is concerned and this is the final group off the tripod i threw this one out pretty badly but i call that one but barring this one that's a pretty decent minute of angle group so it's shooting off a tripod is going to take take some getting used to that begs the question why shoot off a tripod because uh it's more of a field expedient position not so much as a supported position so you don't want to shoot off a tripod unless you absolutely need to because I mean you're obviously going to break down the prone if you're going to try to take a good shot but in a, in a situation where you're in a field and you need to take a fairly support like a more stable position from a a field position over a brush or in between um, certain barricades or whatnot and a tripod gives you that ability to get the elevation you need and still provide added support then you'll use a tripod but anyway this is starting to get this is going to take some getting used to as far as shooting is concerned but um, I'm pretty happy with that final group barring that one shot thrown out to the right now as far as the savage is concerned uh, the functions good um, the groups this is the kind of the uh, I just shot 10 rounds here haphazardly just to get the functionality of the bottom metal tested and then I shot one more group after adjusting my scope and so this is about a little bit over a minute of angle. Well, that's about a minute of angle, roughly. That's an inch group. But uh, that Savage still has life in that barrel, but I want to go to 6.5 Creed more in that gun since I'm refreshing, the, refreshing that rifle as far as the configuration is concerned. So that's pretty much the shooting for today. Um, I'm going to write some stuff about the tripod and the mount that I'm going to post on my blog at OKFJ.net. So look forward to that with detailed photos of that whole really right stuff uh accuracy international plate or you know chassis not that they make i'm going to post a mini review or a review on that and put on my blog but anyway it's just after eight and i'm kind of late for work so i'm going to go home ditch my gear switch cars and then um head to the office but that's it for the range vlog today is wednesday 
October 26th at West End Gun Club.